when you are on finasteride and it stops working what comes to your mind well then the role of dht as the only causative factor of male pattern baldness or androgenetic alopecia gets questioned by you and dht falls from grace evidence suggests that dht is not the only causation of male pattern baldness questions and skepticism abound regarding the role of dht in this video i discuss the many paradoxes that exist regarding the role of dht in the causation of androgenetic alopecia and evidence that though dht may be the primary factor that is responsible for male pattern baldness it is not the only cause of male pattern baldness darling birds darling birds i'm gonna darling birds clinic darling birds is where i'm headed for mama told me son there are no second chances love and war and hate transplant Male pattern baldness besides being a scourge of human vanity is also at times an insurmountable challenge for the treating surgeon especially when it is extensive and the patient is young despite this and after years of research we have still today not been able to pin down the exact cause of male pattern baldness why some people get bald and other people do not it is still a huge enigma once affected by male pattern baldness hair follicles begin to shrink cycle after cycle till baldness happens this miniaturization or the conversion of terminal hair into vellus hair and decrease in the anagen telogen ratio leads to excessive hair fall and in time male pattern baldness it is initially thinning to start with and then bald patches appear bald patches then coalesce to form larger areas of extensive baldness till there comes a time in some patients in which the availability of grafts in the donor cannot recompense for the coverage of the entire bald area so this is a conundrum despite the fact that over 80% of males and over 50% of females in a lifetime develop male pattern baldness we have till today not developed a coherent pathological model that would logically and coherently explain its precursors its biological step processes and physiological responses though the theories of male pattern baldness and counter arguments abound these four facts cannot be challenged number 1 that 5 alpha reductase activity increases in the bald scalp it has been seen that in those patients who have genetic 5 alpha reductase deficiency these patients never experience baldness fact number 2 increased levels of dht are detected in the balding scalp number 3 there is an increase in dht receptors in the bald scalp and last but not the least inhibiting the conversion of testosterone into dht helps in reining in or controlling the onslaught of male pattern baldness consensus regarding available scientific evidence dictates that the cause of male pattern baldness is androgen dependent is genetic it is widely accepted that dht which is the strongest form of testosterone is the reason for miniaturization and it is the reason for balding that happens in androgenetic alopecia but this rather simplistic theory is riddled with counter arguments and skepticism about this theory being the only cause for male pattern baldness abounds and those who continue to support this theory as the prime theory of the cause of baldness can help answering these seven questions that continue to confound what causes dht to increase in balding scalps How does DHT miniaturize baldness prone follicles? Why is DHT also responsible for the development of secondary sexual characteristics that are part of the development of the human body? Those who undergo castration in the pre-pubertal age group undergo a permanent 95% reduction 
in the endogenous androgen production. And these people are known to never suffer from male pattern baldness. But why does castration when it happens in the post pubertal age group not reverse the ill effects of thinning and of baldness? Why does it only stop its progression? Is there a correlation between DHT and remodeling that go hand in hand? Why do identical twins have different balding patterns and speed of baldness? Is there a role to epigenetics? It is clear that the incidence of baldness increases with age. How does this happen in a setting where there is decreased androgen production? Most of us before researching more about baldness, male pattern baldness, and before I myself came into this field of hair restriction surgery many years back, we always thought that DHT was meant to convert vellus hair into terminal hair. And that DHT played a huge role in secondary sexual character determination. But now we learn that DHT is a huge game spoiler and has a role, a primary role in male pattern baldness. On one hand, it is meant to convert vellus hair into terminal hair and here in those prone to male pattern baldness, it increasingly converts terminal hair to vellus hair. This is a huge contradiction and a big paradox. In a review article, Rendall, a researcher into male pattern baldness, was similarly perplexed and he stated in his article how one circulating hormone has such dissimilar effects on a single tissue, depending on its site, is not clear. This biological paradox alone makes the role of androgens in male pattern baldness rather intriguing. This paradox or the opposite effects of DHT on hair in different locations is sought to be explained by the theory of androgen dependent, androgen independent, androgen sensitive and androgen insensitive argument. The scalp is considered to be androgen independent, whether bald or not bald, the scalp grows hair without the support of DHT. Unlike other areas like the beard, the axilla, the chest and the pubic regions, which are dependent on DHT for hair growth. So this theory classifies the non-balding scalp as androgen independent and androgen insensitive, whereas the bald scalp or the balding scalp is classified as androgen independent, but androgen sensitive. This concept of androgen dependent androgen independent treats the whole scalp as one unit. On the other hand, the androgen sensitive and androgen insensitive concept treats the scalp as having two regions, one of which is androgen sensitive and the other one is the androgen insensitive region. The arbitrariness of this division is evident when we question this theory further. So it stands to logic that till such time, the level of DHT in balding scalp and the non-balding scalp is equal. DHT cannot be the cause of baldness or the cause of shrinkage of follicles in the scalp. It has been found that the level of DHT in androgen insensitive areas is completely different from that of androgen sensitive areas. Kaufman in a recent review article goes on to document the role of DHT in the causation of male pattern baldness. In those with male pattern hair loss, follicular miniaturization is caused by an inherited sensitivity of scalp hair follicles to normal levels of circulating androgens. Thus it appears that in balding men, DHT binds to androgen receptors in susceptible hair follicles and by an unknown mechanism activates genes responsible for miniaturization. This statement is confusing because it does not address the opposite effect of DHT on balding areas vis-a-vis -vis those areas that are not balding. If there exists a sensitivity of hair follicles to normal circulating levels of DHT, a generalized pronounced effect is expected and not an effect which is diametrically opposite. 
androgen sensitivity concept to some is a figment of the imagination of the fertile scientific mind a desperate attempt to explain the role of androgens as the only cause of male pattern baldness but the argument they propound in its favor continues to perplex us more than it delivers us from the paradox free thinking scientific contrarians think that this explanation is rather too simplistic and may be misleading holding some dubious genes as responsible for miniaturization and an unknown mechanism that activates them does not stand to reason or scientific audit worst of all it skimps the most critical question and helps it in standing out stark and the question is why is there an increase in dht and an increase in the activity of 5 alpha reductase in the balding scalp this question needs to be answered scientifically with evidence this question takes precedence over the next two questions that come to mind and these are number 1 dht causes conversion of vellus to terminal hair so how can you hold it responsible for hair loss and secondly why does increase of dht levels and baldness happen only at the top of the head if these questions are fair questions to you it is evident that modern science modern research has still not been able to explain to us the causative factors the pathophysiology of androgenetic alopecia let alone building a coherent pathology model that would logically and scientifically explain to us the precursors of androgenetic alopecia the biological step processes of androgenetic alopecia and the physiological responses of androgenetic alopecia